Good morning, Cyber Traders. Happy Friday of this uh, beautiful hot heat wave we here are having in New York. How's everybody doing on the last day of the pay period? Good to see you all. Good morning, Tim, Mark, John. You know what? You guys are so committed. Look at that. I would think so many of you would take off today and you show up to work. That, you see, that is, you, you see, now you guys are starting to learn that uh, holidays do stink because, you know, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of throws a wrench into it. And trying to catch up. But you know what? I thought yesterday we were going to have a bad day. And actually, yesterday was phenomenal, phenomenal. So all looking all looking good. We're going to talk about those big winners, especially the IQ trade. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, so talking about taking candy from a little kid. Uh, Brian says, I, I got to be better at this. Uh, I can't take this off. <laughs> Listen, you know what? It's a commitment. It doesn't require you to sit there and, you know, Get your mind focused. You just got to turn the computer on, log in, you know, put your station on, you know, whatever it is, your TV, whatever you, which station you like, and just sit there and watch what happens. But um, that's, you, you got to put in your time, and some days are great, and some days aren't, but the goal is you're going to hit that, you know, you're going to hit that whale, and that's what we want. You know what I mean? We don't want these little guppies, but uh, we hit those whales. Let me tell you, yesterday was a fun day. And not only that, class was just incredible. For everybody that was the gold and platinum students, yesterday afternoon wasn't the greatest class. I say, And I tell you all the time, sometimes, you know, there's not that much going on. But, um, and, you know, and that's what you need to know when to sit on your hands. Because I think, you know, we're all itchy, like, oh, I'm going to work. I got to make money. I got to make money. And sometimes you're just not there. But yesterday morning, um, for some of you didn't get a chance to see it, I mean, it is posted on your dashboard um, for all you students. Go back and review because we had a great, great lesson um, on, uh, on, on the morning class. And it was just phenomenal. I mean, look, we're going to go through some of those stocks. But come on, you got to give me a break. This was unbelievable. The IQ just did not stop. Now, why? Let, let, let me just uh, kind of ask everybody a, an honest question. What in what would you think? Why would IQ go up? There was no news, nothing. Why would IQ go up? Anybody have any idea? Wayne hit one of the nails on the head. Who the hell cares, right? Mark has no idea. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so think about it. You have President Trump uh, right now in China. I mean, at the G at the G twenty meeting, you know that you know this whole tariff thing. What's going on? There's a Chinese stock. Um, you know, you notice how these Chinese stocks always want to be on the New York Stock Exchange. They don't want to trade on their exchange. And you know, and we traded the stock when the stock went public. We did pretty well on it. And the stock is obviously, you know, you, you heard they might somehow maybe come to some type of uh, an agreement. And a lot of these Chinese stocks are starting to take off. So you know, once again. You know, regardless of what, and you know, it doesn't matter about your political beliefs or whatever. Listen, when there's when there's a Republican in office, we make a lot of money on one stock. We could lose a lot of money on the other. If there's a Democrat president, we can make a lot of money on one stock. We could lose a lot of money on the other stocks. You know, but we're all the same party because we hear the party is, is up for us to make money. We're traders. So you have to trade the market. And whenever you see any opportunity, if, you know, like I said, there are, if there's a construction company and you can't stand them and they're building a, you know, a monstrosity across the street from you, you can do whatever you can to protest. But sure enough, the stock is at a dollar and you know it's going to, you know, $3, it's going to go to 50 in about two weeks. Is that going to stop you from, you know, not buying the stock? You know, what it is is what it is. That's right. It's all speculation and that's what you have to look at it. So um, you got to capitalize on it. So there was just so many of them yesterday that did great. So anyway, the IQ was just, I don't know what the hell happened. This thing was just, you know, the only, only thing I had a problem with IQ is that every time I wanted to buy it back, it never, it never did a shake. It just never did those shakes that we always look for. It just kept going straight up. And there were a lot of other ones out there, a AXSM. That's that one. I mean, look at this thing. This thing just did not want to stop. It literally went from twenty two dollars all the way to twenty five. And you know what the key thing? And because I know we have a lot of people here that are still debating. Do I want to trade? Do I not want to trade? Look at this right here. Another very key component. Um, timing. Right. What do I tell you? Trading's a part time job. Look what happened right here. All every single one of them. They started at nine thirty. They finished at ten ten thirty. And then from 10.30 on, 11 o'clock, flatline. Guess what? Go enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.
DGTX, same thing. Yeah, you know what? It had a little bit of a push around 130, but who would want to stick around then? Look at that action right there in the morning. 9.30 to 10 o'clock, 7.10 to 8 bucks. Take that all day long. PCG. Now, this one, on the other hand, this thing just went straight up. This is another one. I mean, another great, great mover. Look at that. Look at that trend. 21 straight up to 24. You know, that, that was probably the one that kept us here all day long. You know, all day long. Now, the big winner for all my advanced traders, you know, all my level five traders, killed it. Killed it on HHC. Why? It's expensive. Look at this thing. $95 straight up to about 11 o'clock to 130. How do you like me now? Congratulations for all you guys. Who made money on that? Some of you guys killed it on that one. Killed it. Give you guys around. Who, who traded that stock? I know it was a bunch of you. A few of you traded it. I don't know. Just give me, give me a hand who did it. I forgot who traded it. But you, some of you guys killed it on that one right there. Um, I think it was one more, too, that we had right there. What was it? Oh, the CETX. That was another one that we traded. CET, like I said, it was just endless. It was just endless. That thing just popped and went straight down, though. But that was a pretty quick little winner right there when it came to trading. Uh, ben made about $5 on that one, Rich. That's what I thought. I know it was a couple of people traded it and did pretty well on that one. All right, so what's going on this morning? Listen, we go through this every single month, okay? It's the last day of the pay period, the last day of the pay period, and with the last day of the pay period, a lot of people don't like to, you know, ruffle up the feathers. Uh, they want to close out the month. It's beautiful here in New York. We're having a heat wave. It's going to be 90 degrees. Everybody's going to want to leave early. You know, enjoy the, make a, you know, this is the typical three-day weekend. Hey, listen, you might not like it, but that's the luxury of what we do as traders, okay? So the thing is this. Unfortunately, the past two, three days, we really haven't had a really good pre-market day, but it seems like these things are like coming out of the blue in the middle, you know, once the market opens up. So we need to be a little bit more aggressive at the open. There are a couple of stocks that I did find, though, um, that are moving, which by the way, there was one I forgot to mention yesterday that also had a big mover and, um, and it looks like it's spilling over today. And this was our swing trade Uber Uber also killed it yesterday. This thing, I don't know where it came from, but it just kept going up. That was another one that we traded. And this is our, one of our big swing trades that we traded. And I'll tell you, I got a little nervous with, 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 uh, Uber. Um, but you, if you notice something very unusual about this, Look here on the long-term trade, guys. What do you notice here on the long-term trade? What are you guys seeing? What do you notice right here on this little chart right here? That's right. You damn well. It's a Fausto flag. All right? Beautiful Fausto flag. So we got to we, we gotta break that 45. We got to hover at the 45 for a couple of days. 45, 75, I think, is the resistance. But, you know... It, the only thing is, it's a very volatile stock. Very, very volatile stock. So you got to be careful. You got to be a level three trader. But we're, anyway, we're doing that as a swing trade. Chewy, I jumped back in. Chewy was um, another IPO that came out. Chewy also moved pretty nicely. It's gapping up. It shook me out. I was a little upset. Um, but I jumped back into it yesterday. So this is another swing trade. So guys, I want you to understand, because I know we had some day traders here. We have some new trial members, and then people say, what about swing trading? What about what, options trading? Listen, I say it every single time. You want to be a good swing trader, you damn well better know how to day trade first. If you think you're going to trade options, you're out of your mind. Because if you can't trade a stock, how do you know what option is going to move? Don't be a person, I tell it all the time, don't be that person. Oh, well, my guy told me, why should I trade the stock? It's cheaper to trade the option. Yeah, great. That's a poor man playing a rich man's game, all right? If you can't afford the stock, guess what? You can't afford to trade, period. Just, there's a lot, and believe me, there's a lot of stocks that you can, have, you can go out there and, and you can afford to trade, and we see them all day long. But remember, where there's, um, where there's um, uh, you know, when you got a stock like an option or a swing trade, you know, and, and you're like, well, less risk. Yeah, no, it's more risk, higher risk. With a very little reward, you know. Let me tell you a funny story. I had a student. You know, um, I was talking the other day that is is a new student here at Cyber University, and he told me something very interesting. He said it took him about six months to realize that 
he was trading options, and uh, and I, I don't want to waste too much time on it, but I just get I get scared for people that do this. But he told me he says, you know what, I was trading options, and I want to get to stocks. I said I'm I'm a pretty good options trader, but I started realizing that I was risking five times more money to make um, to make that one time profit. So when I thought I was risking less money than just to buy the stock, it was actually a five times heavier risk for me. You know, even though I wasn't risking a lot, but the profit was only one time. It was not worth it, you know, and that's what you have to look at it. But that's what you learn within time. Um, but anyway, let's go through the watch list. So we got these two stocks, Uber and Chewy, back on uh, on the swing trading. But I know some of us have the Uber trade, so we're doing pretty good on that. By the way, I, I bumped into last, last night, I bumped into, uh, I went to, uh, I saw I saw a speaker uh, yesterday and uh, big, big, big hedge fund guy. Guy runs a $12 billion fund. And, um, and, and, and I met a bunch of traders. I was sitting down on the floor um, at the country club and talking to them. And believe it or not, a lot of people do own Uber. Be shocked at how many people own that. They, 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 they really like that stock a lot. CDMO, another one that's moving this morning. It's gapped up a little bit, $3 to $5. That one is moving pretty nicely right there. Not the greatest pre-market, but it is up. It is eighteen percent. It is up ninety. Uh, it is it did trade ninety thousand shares. The uh, the HPT, I'm sorry, J. Also moved this morning. I don't know what happened. It had this big spike and it just stopped. Just died. All right. It's got great iceberg orders there on the right, which you can see on the matrix. But um, got a decent spread up thirty eight thousand shares. But I don't know what happened. It just kind of like died on us. Same thing with the ATAI. Another one we found this morning. We had this big, big run up right out of the gate, and then it just backed right off. It is holding here pretty strong, right around three dollars. It's got it's got a really nice big buyer right there around three bucks, three oh one. You can see it there on the right. So we see we're at support levels right here. We'll see how that holds up. But um, but we do got some uh, we got some big buyers out in this stock right here. So we'll keep a close eye on this one too. You know, uh, this stock, if you do remember, uh, we did trade this stock back in April. The stock, you guys remember it for clear as day. One of the typical, um, one of the typical, uh, you know, dollar stocks went from a dollar to 450, you know, the three, 400% move for, you know, I almost forgot to uh, mention also another stock that we missed too yesterday was Rite Aid. Uh, that was another one I forgot to mention. Another, another winner. There it was another, another big winner right there. Uh, I think they did a, something with, um, were they merging with, uh, are they merging, doing something with Amazon or something like that? I think that was the, new, the news on it. They're going to do, I guess, another similar deal like they did with Whole Foods. But anyway, uh, Rite Aid uh, also was another big winner. Actually, that's a very pretty chart. Very, very pretty chart right there. It just, like I said, the picks were just endless yesterday. It just did not stop. Uh, P-H-U-N, another one that's moving too. That one, it's up at 8%, 70,000 shares. Now, the reason why I want to keep a close eye on this who remembers PHUN? Who remembers this stock when it went from, this was one of our winners. Anybody remember this stock? This is the one that went from $2 to 500 It was the most, this was one of the most craziest, biggest winners ever. Talking about a short squeeze on steroids, this thing just like, you know, it's funny. People don't, don't think about it like, yeah, but where is it today? They forget what we just mentioned. We are day traders, okay? As a day trader, you're in and out the same day, period, okay? In and out the same day. Why, who, when, where is it today? You think I care that's at 250? Talk to me on that day. We cleaned up. I think some of you took off for six months after trading this PHUN. And, and I always tell everybody, don't worry about it. There's going to be another PHUN. Well, I don't know about this year, but that was pretty crazy, the PHUN. That was probably one of the best movers ever. Um, but we're going to keep – I'm going to throw in a watch list because, I don't know, I see a little movement going on here. I don't know what's up with that. STZ, let's keep an eye on that one. That one lease is, is gapped up a little bit. Only bad thing, it's a $200 stock, so if you are a level 3 trader, level, level 4, level 5, this is probably up your alley. And then last I found is the SRNE. That one, um, I don't know if it's on your, you could short it, but this one's really taking a big hit right here. Listen, we know pharmaceutical stocks, they don't come back, guys. Always remember that. TLRY wasn't bad, too. Yeah, Franson. It, 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 the, uh, it's, you know what it is? There was just so many of them out there, Fran. 
I mean, here's a bad example, but that was last year. You know, that was last year. That one, yeah, that one went from 40 all the way to 300. That was another fun stock out there. Another uh, another short squeeze, though. Listen, they were there all the time. You know what? Why you guys show up every morning? The why, why you always here? Because there are going to be other ones like the PHUN, like the TLRY. Um, you know, but the, the thing is, it's not about hitting home runs. It's about hitting base hits. Remember what I always told you in class. Who was a better baseball player if you follow baseball? Joe DiMaggio or Mark McGuire? Other than Mark McGuire was on steroids. Um, would you rather a guy break the, break the record hitting home runs? Or would you rather have someone that hit the base 56 times in a row? So, and how I know it's 56 is because uh, there was a funny story. Not to kind of bore you, but uh, who was it? Uh, his manager back then. Shoot, what's a famous Italian guy? Uh, he told him, he says, you know, he said you screwed up. He was on the Yankees. Who's, 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 I forgot. So any, any, uh, any uh, baseball fans here? Damn, what was his name? Yogi Berra, that's it. Yogi Berra told him he screwed up. He goes, he said, what do you mean? I hit the ball 56 times. He goes, yeah, but you only won away to be on, uh, and, and have Hines sponsor you for the rest of your life to 57 varieties, he said. So <laughs> that was the big joke about it. But you know, listen, he still hit home runs. So my point is this. You're going to hit a home run. It's not about hitting home runs. It's about base hits and being consistent. And, and then you will find, and by being here every day, you're going to hit gold, and you're going to hit the TLRY. But it doesn't happen every day. You just got to keep plugging away. And yesterday was one of those days that you did pretty well. All right, guys. Good luck today. Happy trading. If I don't see you going to the close, enjoy your, enjoy your, uh, your long weekend. In the meantime, uh, Fridays have been great, so don't underestimate it. Leaving early, I always like Fridays because I say it all the time. They get their assistance in. The traders like to leave. And if these stocks have to come out with news, I always find it a lot easier to trade on a Friday than any other day. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. See you back at 2.30.